Hey gang, I'm here in the small town of Hope, Alaska with a population of 192. Now Hope was a small mining community and legend has it that it's got its name from a young man named Percy Hope when he got off the steamship. However, more than likely, the town got its name from the optimistic miners hoping to strike it rich. Now, before that though, the upper Turnigan arm had been left largely unexplored because of the strong boar tides and strong currents making travel by boat very difficult and very dangerous. However, this changed when Alexander King came up Turnigan arm all by himself. Then in 1889, he returned to Kenai City with four pokes of gold. That's a small fortune and the gold rush was on. People flooded to the area, and then the towns of Hope and Sunrise were established in 1896. Over 3,000 men were here. Most were wanting to stake a claim, strike it rich as quick as possible, and head down to their families. But there were some men who did bring their families here, and they wanted to make Hope their new home. Can you imagine growing up in a mining camp? I mean, it was probably pretty fun. Could have gotten a little bit dirty and nasty at times as well. And probably at other times it could be very hard and difficult. I mean, what would you guys do for fun? I mean, what would you guys do for friends? Where would you go to school at? Would there be any school? Well, Bobby Matheson was eight years old when his family moved to Hope. And from him and his brother, we can learn what it was like to be kids during a gold rush. Bobby's father was Robert Byrne Matheson. Robert Matheson was Scottish born, spent some time in Texas, and found himself joining the gold rush to Alaska. He arrived in Hope, Alaska alone sometime in the spring of 1898. He staked a claim near the confluence of Palmer and Resurrection Creeks, about seven miles from Hope. He was a stern, hard man, and that summer found him pulling out several ounces of gold. Encouraged by the strike, he sent word for his family to join him, and they arrived the following year. Bobby Matheson was only eight years old when he traveled to Hope, Alaska with his family. His dad had come the year before and found gold on Resurrection Creek, and he sent for the family, and it was quite a project to get that family up from Texas. Bobby was eight, his Brother Charlie was 16, his oldest brother John was 18, and they had a 14-year-old sister named Bessie who was crippled with polio. She couldn't walk at all and they had to carry Bessie wherever they went. When they finally arrived in Hope by boat, they were all out of money and that first winter was pretty lean. They lived in a one-room cabin, the six of them, up at the gold mine. Bobby remembered that uh, he had rabbit skins for socks. He had worn out all his socks, but he was real helpful, got firewood, assisted his mom in taking care of sister Bessie. Now at first there was no school for Bobby to go to. There weren't many kids in town, there was no teacher, and it didn't help that there wasn't a school building either. Well, that changed in 1904 and it had to do with a new community building, a bunch of dynamite, and a heart attack. New Community of Hope wanted a social hall in 1902-1903. They built one. Uh, it was open for the first time for the Christmas party in, in 1903, and everyone went down there to eat and dance and play music. 
and uh, a couple of the miners got a little too carried away and shut off some dynamite out on the tidal flat, and an elderly miner fell over dead, had a heart attack. Well, his wife was quite upset with the community, and uh, she insisted that people hire her to teach school that spring so that she would have money to pay for her ship passage back to outside. We'd like to say a hat was passed and people put money in it. And for the rest of that school year, January through May, she taught uh, the students in her cabin. Bobby was part of that class. Now, in May of that year, Oscar Grimes stepped off the steamship. Now, at first, he worked for the Alaska Commercial Company, but that fall, the community loved him so much that they asked him to stay the winter and be a teacher for the children. While in Hope, I had a chance to visit the actual building where Bobby Matheson went to school. It's located at the Hope Museum. It's a really tiny cabin. It's amazing to realize that Oscar Grimes taught school and lived in this small building. You should really check it out if you're ever in Hope. You'll get to see some of the things used at that time period. You'll see a pocket watch that Oscar may have owned. You'll also get to see the type of books that the students may have used in their studies. Now, you have to remember that wintertime in a cabin is cold and dark. To help pass through those cold winter months, people would gather at the community hall every Saturday. Basically, it was their living room. They would share food, play music, laugh, and dance. Music was an important part of life for the settlers in Alaska, and Bobby hoped to learn to play the fiddle. George Slayback, one of the gold miners, actually built fiddles, and he built one for Bobby. Bobby traded a, a moose carcass for it, and he played that fiddle for years. Finally, it did fall apart. He, he blamed it on the glue. As adults, Bobby and Charlie continued to live in hope. They worked at the mine, owned a store, and operated a ferry service that shuttled people from Hope to communities around Turnigan Arm. Ha! This included the new small town of Anchorage. Now, operating the ferry was no small feat considering the extreme tides and currents of Turnigan Arm. One thing they did for the Hope School students in 1937 was take them all on a field trip for a picnic. And they traveled down the arm and uh, in the boat, and Bobby was pointing out the landscape and trying to get as close to the shore as possible for the kids to look at the vegetation and the animals, and he went aground. He uh, got caught on a rock, and when the tide went out, the boat was high and dry. The kids had to walk back to Hope several miles. That was the favorite story. In 1951, the road to Anchorage was completed and their ferry service was no longer needed. So, the Matheson brothers moved out to their trapping cabin at Chickaloon. Now, eventually, Charlie passed away. But Bobby Matheson continued to live at the trapping cabin all by himself. To keep himself company, though, he made friends with many of the animals that lived near his cabin. He was especially fond of one bull moose that he named Sad Sam. During the winter, Bobby would cut willows to help Sam and the rest of the moose make it to spring. Bobby Matheson lived the life he loved, trapping and mining, even into his old age. I mean, when the guy was in his 70s, he decided to build his own boat and sail down to Seattle, but all by himself too. But he sadly never had the chance to do that because in 1967, when Bobby was 76 years old, his remains were found in his burned down cabin at Chickaloon Creek. He died living the way he loved, mining, trapping by himself independently. <laughs>